Let's give her a hand. God, God is good. He takes care of us. Way the Lord. Keep up with my time because we put it on YouTube. We have to have a certain amount of time uh, to be able to put it on there. This message will be going going out. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning, yes. and we just want to praise you and worship you. That you are the one who gives the blessing. Yes. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 I want to talk this morning about true worshipers. I'll be coming from Psalms 24. Chapter 24, verses 1 through 10. Turn with me, please, if you would, to Psalms chapter 24, verses 1 through 10. Let me know when you get it. Give a big amen or something. something. What was that again? Yeah. Psalms 24, verse, the whole chapter, verses 1 through 10. I'll be keying in on uh, 3 and 6. The word of the Lord reads accordingly. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the, rock, upon the floods. Who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that had clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. That is, bowed before idol or idols. What is an idol? An idol is anything that takes the place of your worshiping our Lord. An idol could be a football game. An idol could be whatever. Then verse 5 says, He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek Him, that seek thy face, O Lord. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even and lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. True worshipers. It is the privilege of true worshipers to approach and be near to God. The very place and seat of His glory. One can not only ascend, but stand there as well. And I believe we did that this morning. Yes, this is a true privilege when one comes to church for one reason. And this one reason is to enter into the presence of the Holy God. Praise and worship from the heart brings each one of us into His presence. Praise and worship is not music. Maybe not music might not be pleasing to the ears, I don't know. But to me, praise and worship opens the door for me to enter in to God's presence. And may I ask you a question this morning, how can you hear from God if you're not in His presence? <coughs> oh, it might not be that like each one of us is speaking to one another face to face, but God wants to speak to you too. God wants to speak to your spirit. God wants to speak to you the way that you can hear Him and understand Him. To me, praise and worship prepares me to enter into the presence of a holy, righteous God. And before we lay hands on anyone here, I believe in laying on my hands. I believe in anointing with anointing oil. The laying on of hands nor the anointing oil is going to heal anyone. It's got to come from the throne room of God. Amen. But I believe we have to be close to God to be able to hear from God. Because when someone comes up, that someone needs to hear what God is saying, not what we're saying or what someone else is saying. Amen. They need to hear what God is saying. 
If you're ate up with cancer, no one here is, I don't believe, right now. But if God has only given you a short amount of time, don't you think you need to hear from God and not what somebody else says or thinks? I want to hear from God because I need to hear from God. But if I want to hear from God, I got to be in the presence of God. I got to be where I got to be where God is. People will say, "Well, God is everywhere." Well, that's true. But I tell you, I need to be in the presence of God because I want to hear from God because I need to minister to people that's coming from the throne room of God. Amen. Let me put it to you like this: You go to the doctor. That happened to me personally. I went to the doctor. You got a very rare form of skin cancer. It's very dead. And most people don't live three to four months. Well, do I want that doctor to lie to me? Or do I want that doctor to tell me the truth? Well, I need to know the truth. I want the truth. And this church was praying and fasting for me while I was on a mission trip in Honduras. And God reached out and healed me. That's been, what, 2010 to now? I guess it's gone on four years. But I want to praise the Lord. We need to share the Word of God. But we need to share the Word of God in the truth of God. Right now, today, we're seeing people taking the Word of God and making it fit public opinion. Well, I'm not here to please the public. I want to please God. Because when this breath leaves this body, I'm going to bow before my Lord and I'm going to give an account for everything that I say and everything that I do. Amen? And I don't want God to say, Son, you should have said the truth. I want God to say, son, you said it like it was. Now, come on, let's go. Let's go into my house, my kingdom. Amen? Amen. Amen. But I will share something with you. Life within itself is hard. Can I have an amen? Amen. amen? The hill is hard to climb at times. The hill of life is difficult to climb. But I say this. One first must be willing, and then second one must be ready. Third must, third one must want to climb the hill. We gotta be, we gotta be willing. We gotta be ready, and we gotta want to. Amen. If we want to stay the way we are, we will become what we are. I don't want to stay the way I am. I want to get closer and closer and closer to God until I enter into the gates of heaven. Amen. That's what I want. But even though the hill is called hard, it's hard to climb. If we have a willing mind and a willing spirit to let God lead us, God will lead us up that hill. God will take us out and lead us to where He wants us to go and be. The true, devout, true worshipers of God wants to enter into His presence in order to climb that hill. And again, I say life within itself is not easy. Life within itself is hard. A lot of times we make wrong decisions. We make bad choices. But I'm so thankful that I have a God if I come to Him and I am true repentance and I confess to my Lord that He will take whatever condition, situation, or circumstance that I might find myself in and He will bring me on out of it if I give my life to Him. And that's what we're talking about this morning. We're not talking about a lukewarm believer. We're not talking about someone who wants to bargain with God. God, if you do this, I'll do that. Or if I do this, will you do that, God? I don't bargain with God. I come and I bow before God and I say, God, here I am. I confess. I repent. I confess. Now lead me where you want me to go. Lead me up that hill so I can get closer and closer to you. As a true worshiper, I want to become familiar and I want to become deeper into God's Word. You know, I can get up there and jump around all day. And there's nothing wrong with it if that's the way you worship God. But if that's all I do, that's all I'm going to get. I want to come and I want to worship God because I want the Holy Spirit to fill my heart with His presence. Amen. 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 So I'm saying amen. Amen. I want God to reveal His deeper, deeper Word into my spirit. Because without that deeper revelation, how can I apply God's Word to me through His revelation if I don't want to get deeper into God's Word? 
A lot of people believe people are very spiritual that they can memorize, or they can whatever, memorize the whole Bible. Well, I can't memorize the whole Bible because I'm not that smart. But I am smart enough to know that when I get into the Word and when the Word needs to be spoken to someone else, that the Holy Spirit is going to take that Word, is going to share it with somebody else so they can understand it. Let me give you an illustration. Maybe I've said it before, but I believe I need to say it now. We was in Honduras on a mission trip, the last day of the mission trip. Everybody went on into town. There were just two of us there. Neither one of us could speak Spanish. Not one word. I have enough trouble with English. Let's go and try to learn something else. So when I master English, I'll go to another language. But anyway, this is what happened. We were walking back up, and a, and a, a Spanish guy came, and, so we got two, and, and he couldn't speak either, and pointing, and, and, and through the spirit, the spirit of discernment, I understood what he was telling me. He's speaking Spanish, all I can understand is English. He brought those two young ladies out, I think one was 13 and one was 14. And what they needed to do, they wanted to meet Jesus Christ. And I asked God, come on, we can, can we ask God what His Word says and apply it? I said, God, just like when Peter spoke, others in the, in the crowd, they understood what he was saying. They understood what he was saying. I said, Lord, right now, we need a miracle. I need to speak to these two young ladies to where they can understand. Amen and amen. And I said, okay, God, here we go. And I led them in a confession, profession of faith in English. They understood in Spanish, and they responded. Amen. About two or three later, uh, hours later, a guy came back on the mission team and he could speak Spanish. I said, Brother Jerry, would you please go talk to these two young ladies? And he went and talked to them. And he come back and he said, Brother Gerald, they understood every word you said. Amen. That's the mighty power of God. Amen. When we get into the presence of God, and this is documented, by the way. I mean, I didn't write it in the newspaper or anything, but it's documented by people who was there. If Jerry was here, he would tell you right now. Amen. But that's how we need to be that close to God. We need to be able to hear from God. We need to be able to speak for God. But we need the Holy Ghost in our lives. Amen. If you go around, come on. Now, we need the Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen. How can we hear from God if we're not in the presence of God? Amen. Hallelujah. Then verse 3, and I love this chapter. Verse 3 says, Who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? But who shall stand in His holy place? Who may ascend? Who may stand in His holy place? The Bible says that there are some that can and will stand in His holy place. And I'm going to believe the Word of God. For I want to be, like I said, to be this close to the King of Kings. When somebody's praying for you, don't you want them to be in the presence of God? Amen. Don't you want it? I believe in healing. I believe in the spiritual gifts. We believe, we exercise the spiritual gifts here. I know some people say, well, brother, that don't happen anymore. Well, it might not happen where you're at, but it's happening where we're at. Amen. When I had cancer, I didn't really care what you said. I, I cared what God reached out and touched me and took it away. Amen. Come on. So I'm not really worried about what all these other people say. I'm worried about what God is telling us. Amen. How is God speaking to you right now? <coughs> and I know right now, I believe by faith that God is speaking to the majority of each one of you all this morning. God is speaking to you right now. Now it's how you're going to respond to the way God speaks to you in order for you to apply it to your life, in order for your life to be, to be victorious. Do you know that we can still be victorious in whatever condition, situation, or circumstance that we might find ourselves in? Because I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is in control. And I believe God is going to lead us out. He's going to lead us out. Psalms 23, I love 1 and 2. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He will make me lie down in green pastures and lead me beside the still waters. That's my Lord. My Lord is my shepherd, my Savior, the Messiah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. And remember this. God will only fill you as much as you allow Him to. It's pretty hard for God to fill you if you're full of yourself. I say this, we need to get come to the altar and empty ourselves out 
and ask God to fill us with His presence, fill us with His Spirit, fill us with His Word, fill us with His revelation, fill us in order for us to be able to get up and apply it to our life and walk in victory. Amen. Come on, come on. I want to be victorious. But I want to be victorious in a way that people can see God working in my life in order for them to say, you know, I just might want what that little guy's got. I might just want what he's got. And I pray that they'll see it's the Holy Spirit. It's the presence of God in my life. Amen? The Bible says, I love this, verse 4, He that has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul with the vanity of the idols or nor sworn deceitfully. Clean hands is a person's actions. Not to run to do evil, but to run to do good. One's hands, and we know this, hands is used uh, to do things, good things, honorable things, to help others. A pure heart. That's an inner attitude. What type of attitude do we have? What type of attitude do we have here at the Father's house? Do we care for others? Do we believe that God will do what His Word says that He'll do? Amen. One's attitude is the way one acts, the way one thinks, the way one feels. Don't let road rage grab a hold to you. Amen. You know one thing, we put it on the back of my windshield and whoever else had wanted it, we put the Father's house worship center with three crosses. I told them, I said, now be careful. Be careful. Because somebody's going to see that sign behind and your windshield, your, your rear, your rear uh, window. And if you have road rage, they're going to they look at that and say, what? Just what's going on? So I got the I got the Father's house with the three crosses on my truck and I asked his car. So I got to be careful while I'm driving, right? Praise God, because people are watching. Amen. Amen. Let them see Jesus in us. Amen. So what if they get ahead of you? So what if they toot their horn? Say, Lord, bless them. Don't get excited. So what if somebody's got a harsh word for you? The Bible says that what? A soft answer turns away wrath? Amen. So what if somebody's got a bad attitude at McDonald's? I guarantee you this, you give them a big smile and say they look good. They'll remember it. Because we don't know what someone else is going through. We just don't know what someone else is going through. Amen. But we do know what we're going through. And we do know what we can do. We do know what we can do with our attitude. We do know that we can give someone a smile. That we can give someone a soft answer. That we can say to someone that Jesus loves you. And I love you too. And I'm not going to get smart with you. Amen? Amen. Clean hands and a pure heart. I want my hands to do what is right. And I want my heart to think on godly things. And today it's hard to think on godly things, isn't it? You turn on your TV and what do you see? Well, a lot of stuff we see we don't need to see. Amen. Amen. And what we see on TV we sure don't need to see here. Amen. 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 I, want my, I want my thoughts to be pure. Amen. I want my thoughts to be centered on Christ Jesus. Amen. I want my sights to be saturated in the presence of God in His Word. And we're going to see things change. We're going to see things change. Things are going to start changing. And you know where it's going to start changing? Not over there, but right here. This is the main thing anyway. It's not so much what others think of you, but rather what do you think of yourself? What do you think of yourself? I'll say this. God created me before the cre God knew me before the creation of the world. God don't make no mistakes, so I'm no mistake. Amen. Amen. I have to be quite satisfied with who I am, where I am, and what I'm doing. Praise God. 
Amen. If I'm not satisfied with me, then I need to get on my face and say, God, here I am. I'm opening my heart to you. You take out what don't belong there. You put in there what you want to put in there because here I am. I'm submissive to you. I have surrendered totally to you. Here I am. Amen. Amen. And you'll see a change taking place. You will see things taking place that you never thought you was worthy to see. But it's not what you think, it's what God thinks. Isn't that good? Amen. Hallelujah. But then, but now let's talk about something too. He shall receive, he or she shall receive blessings from the Lord. Verse 7 says, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. We want the King of glory here at the promised house. Now here it is, verse 8. How many here is going through some things in your life right now? I don't know what, amen, all right, just be honest. God knows already. And we're not trying to find out what it is because I really don't care what it is. I do know this. We bring, you bring it before the you bring it before the Lord and I agree with you and the Lord will take care of it for you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. But verse 8 now. Here, here, here's what we're saying here. What? Clean hands, a pure heart, and we have not bowed before idols. Then what does it say in verse 8? Who is the king of glory? Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. If you're going through a battle, who's going to take care of you? Jesus. The King of Kings. Amen. Lord of Lords. Lord of Lords. Host of hosts. You see, I can go into a battle. I can go into battle because I know I'm going to be victorious. Because why? Because the King of Glory is in there, going in there for me. And I'm walking with it, but I can't sit on the couch and expect God to do all my battles. I need to get up and get off of it and start what? Praising Him and worshiping Him and serving Him. And He's going to bring me through. Amen. Amen. He's going to bring me through. Lord. So coming to church is a whole lot more than just coming to church now, isn't it? Amen. Coming to church is coming to be in the presence of a holy and righteous God because I believe the Holy Spirit was here this morning. A lady said this morning, and she knows who I'm talking about. She feels that it's going to be a good morning. Hallelujah. Amen. And I believe it is right now. Amen? Amen. Amen. That God wants to touch us. True worshipers. True worshipers. Someone might be in a battle right now. Put your faith and trust in Jesus. And He's going to bring you through. He's going to bring you through. We need someone strong that will be able to bring us through. And that's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible says, Greater is He that is in you than He is of the world. How many born again believers believe that? Amen. How many believe that? Greater is our Lord in us, the Holy Spirit in us, than He is of the world. Who is He of the world? The world. Satan, being of those of the world. Those who put everything ahead of our Lord. But the Lord says, Greater is He that is in me than He is of the world. If I believe that, and I do believe that, what does the world have to offer me that I want? Nothing. Nothing. Then why should I be afraid? I'm not afraid. Because I believe my Jesus is going to bring me right through. I'm opposed with this. When it's my time to leave this world, I'm ready to go because I have somewhere to go. He had mine, so I'm ready to go because I have somewhere to go. I'm going to step out of this world and I'm going to step into the kingdom of God. Victory. Victory is mine because I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Divine help is needed when we worship the Lord. You know, you can worship the Lord whether you're standing up, sitting down, raising your hands, or having your hand in your pocket. It's the way that God wants you to worship Him. Mm -hmm. True worship is to let the Holy Spirit lead that they worship Him, the King of kings, the Lord of mm -hmm. So I pray this morning 
But each one of y'all has been filled. Like I have been filled this morning. I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.